Episode 4 of HBO's 30 Coins was titled Memories. Old acquaintances Sandro and Santoro delight in Father Vergara's return to Rome. Meanwhile, in Pedraza, the townspeople struggle to make amends with a embittered Elena as Paco fights to keep her close. Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome back to my channel Movie Files. Elliot Beck again with my weekly recap, breakdown, and review of the latest episode of HBO's 30 Coins. We're talking episode 4 titled Memories, which was an episode I was really excited for because this was a flashback a much needed backstory for Father Vergara and we learn a lot of big stuff in this episode I'm so excited to break it all down in this spoiler review but before we dive into it as you can see on the screen now make sure you all are following me on all my other social media accounts like Facebook Instagram and Twitter which you can find all those links in the description below if you are new to the channel welcome to the community consider subscribing and while you're at it hit the notification bell that way you can get the alert for when I drop new content it would mean a lot to me if you all can like and share this review it not only helps out the channel but I also appreciate all the support and in the comment section for those that have seen this fourth episode of 30 coins let's break it all down again we got the servant of the devil we have his eminence and finding out his backstory and we meet some of the father of Agara's friends and we also get a uh, return of elena's husband which we'll talk about in this review but i want to know your thoughts in the comments again your pros your cons your thoughts your theories let's break it all down in the comments below so episode four i have been saying it for three weeks now this show is so underrated. I'm so glad I'm breaking it down every week with you all, but I just wish more people would watch the show because this is just great television to me. It's so entertaining. It's so much lower in mythology. There's some great, great character development, especially in this episode of Father Vergara. And they have so many like little little stingers. Again, the return of Elena's husband, the information we get with the relationships that uh, Father Vergara had with his eminence. It's just so much to really break down. I really enjoy this show. And again, I have so much fun breaking down with you every single week, but I really enjoyed this fourth episode. It didn't have all the the scare factors of the first three episodes, but to me, I'm okay with that because we got great character development. But again, let me know your thoughts on this fourth episode of Memories, and let's discuss it. So let's get into this breakdown, this recap. As the episode opens up, I would say out of the, the four kind of cold opens that we've gotten so far, or maybe three cold opens, is we get a group of priests kind of in this Indian Indiana Jones-like situation where they're going underground and they come across this huge statue of Christ being put on the cross and they're looking for a 30 coin and they find one of the coins, which I guess one of the things that I'm really interested in figuring out if they ever explain this is how are his eminence and his people how are they coming about this information and where they find these coins? You know, we got the bank heist, we got the jeweler being robbed last week, and then we have this here. I'm just curious on how, I mean, of course, they have information that they can find things, but I'm just curious on where they're getting this information or where to find these coins. But nonetheless, they find a coin, and I believe the gentleman that finds this coin is the same guy, the same priest that we got later in this episode, but also the same priest that we saw in episode one that had the person uh, do the bank heist. I, I believe that's the same character, but let me know if I'm wrong in the comments. But nonetheless, we fast forward, we see that Paco is addressing the townspeople, those that were involved in Elena's clinic being destroyed last week. And we also want a little bit of information regarding the timeline. It's, we, find, we find out that it's been a few days since episode three into this episode, so not a lot of time has passed. But this meeting that Paco is holding... He's essentially asking the people to right their wrongs, to make amends to Elena destroying her shop. And at first, it seems like they're, you know, they, they want to apologize. They want to make it up to her. But as soon as money gets involved, they're like, oh, no, we don't want to spend money in paying her. We don't want to repaint it and all this stuff. It's like it went kind of went left field really quick. And then, of course, we have the conversation being brought up in regards to Paco's wife bringing up that every and even the townspeople noted this, that ever since the priest came into this town and Elena's been hanging out with the priest, that things have kind of went south. And that's where Paco's wife kind of plays into the energy of the room and tries to turn the blame on Elena and the priest. And they come up with the, I don't want to say voting system, but they all kind of vote to have the priest kicked out of town, which, you know, we kind of cut to seeing Paco obviously upset with his wife. And they go to the priest's house to kind of talk about the, the meeting that just, went play, that just went down. And we find out that the priest is not at home, but he is actually on a flight to Rome. And that's where this episode really kind of takes the life of itself. Again, we don't have any possession this episode. So we don't have a Ouija board. We don't have a giant spider baby. But this is just a good episode that really kind of explains Father Vergara because a lot of the conversations we have in the comments is, can we trust Father Vergara? What is the information he's holding back from our main characters, Elena and Paco? And this was the episode to me that really kind of shines a light on his character. Number one, we know he's not your average priest, right? I mean, the man's boxing. This man definitely has a different uh, approach to how he delivers the word. He swears. We know he's a very different priest of a lot of sorts compared to but the 
traditional sense of what you would think of a priest. But nonetheless, as we see in this episode, we get a flashback to 1990 in Rome, where we see a younger Father Vergara. We see his two friends, Antoro, who is his eminence, a younger version of him. And then we also meet uh, Sandro. So they're having this conversation at the dinner table. And it's a really interesting conversation. Again, I love when this, this show kind of dives into these conversations amongst the characters. But uh, we get a conversation about they don't feel close to God, but they feel closer to the devil in regards to just being everyday life and being in their head and the, and the evil things that people go through in life. It's just an interesting conversation. They play a game, a game of fear with a fork. And we have this moment where we see his eminence, you know, stabs himself in the hand and he says this particular line where fear encourages him and this is where we get the kind of the inklings of him kind of you know going back to how i call his eminence and his people like the the the, the sith right in star wars this is kind of you see that darkness kind of lays within him that he kind of as he says he embraces the fear and embraces kind of the darker side of kind of religion right we fast forward and we finally see elena we catch up to her see that she's again she's such a nice person she's you know helping a guy out whose cow needs to get inspected on whatever even though he was part of the ones that burned her clinic but in this conversation he tries to pay her money for making up for what he did she goes to the grocery store and the people at the grocery stores try to give her free groceries. And Elena, she's just like, I don't need your pity. I don't need your pity. It's not a pity party. Whatever, you know, what happened, happened. It is what it is. And they're just kind of like, you're so ungrateful. Again, the town just has so much, the women, I should say, of the town did not like Elena, but I'm just such a big fan of her character. But we move forward and see that Elena kind of checks in. So we hear, you know, it's nice to kind of know what she's been up to. It sounds like her surgery went well. We also have a visit from Elena, having a visit, an old friend that we haven't seen since episode two. She visits Roque and then she brings up the fact that is that offer that we got from episode two does that offer still stand which means that Elena wants to leave this town cut to a really quick scene but an important scene we see the Pope saying hello to the people greeting the people and then he comes across a man a very mysterious man who we learn about in this episode as he says oh you're not gonna give me a, a kiss or give me a handshake so we're gonna learn more about that character here in a bit but going back to the flashback of 1990 in Rome we see Father Fragara in a classroom setting where he has his teacher showing this exorcism being performed and he questions the methods of this exorcism he questions the father perform this exorcism and asks him why don't we conversate with the person that's possessed why don't we speak to the devil speak to our enemy learn our enemies uh you know motives and kind of learn about why he's doing what he's doing you know referring to the satan and the devil so you see this kind of question uh questions you know puts authority to in the head and the father kicks him out of class actually uh, at one point they almost thought about expelling him but again it's in that moment that you you see more of the layers and understand more of Father Vergara, of his approach, his kind of unorthodox approach and him questioning certain methods amongst the priests and how things are being held. So again, I just love these character moments, especially for Father Vergara, who gets a lot of backstory in this episode. So then we go to seeing that the Cardinal uh, Santro is, has a man in chains and he's had him in chains for two months I'm, I'm very curious on how that whole thing was set up like number one why would he just let him take him we know that he's a servant of the devil i mean there's all obviously a purpose of all this but i'm just kind of curious on how he ended up bonding him but again we don't really learn that but nonetheless we see that he's been studying him so he's been recording their sessions and this is where we get revealed that it is the same man that was talking to the pope a couple scenes ago and then we get this really intense scene as we see our uh, friend question this man being held the about, oh, are you really the devil? If you're really the devil, why would you let yourself get caught? Why don't you just break yourself away from these chains? Matter of fact, why don't you spit fire out of your mouth and he gets that request and he is definitely caught. He catches on fire. So he definitely got what he was requesting to see, again, the presence of the devil there. We pay a visit to his friend in prison. We see that his friend, Sandro, uh, is a uh, teacher and he's teaching you know these people how to fight in prison and he's happy to see Vergara. And it seems like they haven't seen each other since that incident happened of him catching on fire, which we actually go back to that flashback and we learn that this man is a servant of the devil. And after this uh, battle, we learn that Satan withdrew his best man to a safe place beyond God's eye and that place is no other than hell as we get this more backstory regarding that Satan not being a fallen angel of pride but he wanted to be a part of the divine plan and be recognized and that goes back to the conversation that we had in our oculus episode the mirror episode regarding there's necessary evil to balance out the good. And then there's a really kind of controversial moment here where it says that God is Satan. So again not throwing my religious beliefs into this conversation, but it's just a really interesting kind of 
mythology and lore and the conversations that this show kind of brings to light regarding obviously the situation in this world and not expanding it outside of real world situations which i know there are some people that might believe some of this stuff that are, they're referring to in this show but Again, in the context of the show, it's just these interesting concepts and these conversations about religion that really fascinates me with this show. But nonetheless, we cut to his eminence asks to meet his boss, which he says, you know, he's on the other side. We see him open the door. He walks in. Father Vigari doesn't walk in. And he noticed that he is no longer there. And he's not only gone, his friend, but we also notice that the servant of the devil is also has disappeared. We see that Father Vigari, he has to fight one of the prison people to get more information from his friend. And in this conversation, and his friends suggest that he hide. You know, he's been hiding for 20 plus years in this prison that's been filled with pain. He suggests that he find some place to hide because he knows that his eminence and his power is very strong and they say their goodbyes. I don't know if we'll get to see that character again in future episodes, but I thought that was a really nice moment, a really good friendship there. But cut back to Paco, tries to stop Elena from leaving town. He almost gives her a kiss. Uh, again, we, we know that love triangle is gonna make its way into the show sooner rather than later, but nonetheless, we see that she she passed Acts one bag <laughs> and you know it's kind of interesting so she just left her home and just packed one bag again i guess some people the materialistic things for elena doesn't really matter but she packs one bag and leaves to go to the airport and we'll catch up to her a little bit later but fast forward to 1992 we get another flashback of jerusalem and we see father vagara is taking his friend to kind of seek ways to heal his his wounds inside as well as out because he feels like his soul has been burned when that incident happened but they spot uh, I believe they called him, it was two different, they called him uh, Fabio, I believe is his name, but also they call him Santoro, so they spot him nonetheless, and he see, we see that he goes on the run, he acts like he doesn't know him, and we see, again, him getting picked up by the gentleman that, that was at the beginning of this episode who found the 30 coin, or found one of the coins in the eye of uh, the Christ being hung on the cross, but again, I think that's the same guy that was in episode one, but I'm not, not too sure about that, but cut back to the episode, we get this fight that we've been kind of knowing that was going to happen inevitably with Paco and his wife as she leaves uh, Paco in this kind of conversation they have she comes across Antonio very interesting conversation here because he tells her that she needs to forget him because he loves Elena speaking of Paco and that her husband is alive and not to interfere because she's gonna he's gonna perform a miracle and bring Elena's husband back which will obviously would solve her problem but we'll talk about that once we get to that moment but back to Father Vergara he visits his old teacher get the conversation about why he was sent to this small town and he said he was sent there for a reason and this is where we cut to this old woman pouring this kind of I don't know magic or liquor or alcohol on this scarecrow and this scarecrow is holding the picture of Elena and Paco which is very interesting like what's the significance of Elena's husband why is he so important to this whole situation back to father vergara and him talking to his teacher in, in regards to them discussing 30 coins and the only person that can help them is the holy father he's the only one that they can trust back to that scarecrow we see that it is now forming itself and we see that it he this this scarecrow is now elena's husband and we see him you know dirt all over him and the townspeople like that's not who we think it is we see that he takes a shower and yes it is elena's husband is it really her husband? Is it the scarecrow impersonating her husband? We know that there's supernatural stuff going on in the show. Again, I don't know the significance of why he was missing for two years. Was his his whole play into this whole thing? Who was that old lady? So many questions to be answered. Was that his mom? I, I, I don't know. But obviously, we'll find out in the weeks ahead. But as we wrap up the episode, we cut to Elena arriving at the airport. Paco tells her the news that her husband is back. So obviously, we know that she's not going to take the offer anymore and go back to see what the hell he's been up to and why he's been missing for two years and if that really is her husband. And also, we end the episode with Fagara meeting the Holy Father, and he believes that he can be trusted he's going to partner him up with someone that they believe in he's going to be in good company and it's revealed to be his eminence himself cardinal fabio satoro so we know that he's not he can't be trusted we know that he is in cahoots with the 30 coins and the guy at the beginning of the episode the, the servant of the devil he's working for the devil and is the devil inside of him time will only tell so as far as questions go again what is the significance of Elena's husband and what's his part into this role? Where has he been for two years? Who was that older woman? 
We also have to remember that literally last week, Elena threw the coin in the in the dam or the water. Where's that coin? Will it be found again? Will anyone come about finding that coin? Or is it like attached to Elena somehow? Is she going to come back around this coin because she possessed it for a certain amount of days? So we'll see what happens to that coin. We'll see if Father Vergara, if you know Paco's wife, is going to be able to get him out of the town. We know that he needs to be in the town as he found that out from his uh, teacher. And a lot of stuff to break down. This was, again, this wasn't the, I don't want to say entertaining, but it wasn't as entertaining as the previous three episodes with the, you know, the baby creature spider and the possession uh, episode that we got with the Ouija board and, of course, what we got last week. But this, to me, was a such a good episode because it was character development, backstory, mythology, lore, getting those flashbacks were so important to me. And I really enjoyed this episode. And I have been so impressed by this show from the cinematography, the acting, the directing, Again, I'm a person that loves backstory, and this show gives you so much of it. So I really enjoyed this episode, but I want to know what you all thought of this fourth episode. Memories, your pros, your cons, your thoughts, your theories, and your predictions for the weeks ahead. As I say every week, I am very aware that there are people overseas that have seen, I think, all of this show yet. So please refrain from giving away spoilers. And for those that are watching this, as I'm watching it week to week, less engaged in conversation. But again, if you've seen the episodes, by all means, I'm not discouraging you for leaving your thoughts in the comments, but don't spoil anything for the weeks ahead because, of course, you've seen the episodes. But nonetheless, thank you all for watching this review. Make sure to like, share, leave your thoughts in the comments, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell. That way you can stay up to date with all my new videos. Hope you all are staying safe. Hope you enjoyed this review and we'll see you on the next video.